Okay, another important parameter to take into consideration in your composting is aeration. Now, you may recall this graphic from an earlier presentation. Uh, the dynamic of the oxygen in and the water and carbon dioxide out depends on pore space and mechanical aeration. By mechanical aeration, I mean either stirring the pile or if you really want to get fancy, you can have tubes running through your pile and constantly pumping air into the centers of the system. Then you're aerating it without having to turn it. Uh, that's usually not something that homeowners do, but it is a possible way of keeping your pile aerated. But this aeration, uh, all that, the dynamics of that oxygen exchange for the water and the carbon dioxide depends on your pore space. And uh, particle size is very important in determining pore space. And you know how important particle size is in the rate of, com of breakdown of your materials. We just had a video on that and how important it is to have smaller particle sizes so you create more surface area. Well, the particle size also determines your pore space, the particle size and the particle shape. Now, you want pieces that are small enough to create a lot of surface area. However, if your particles are too small, as Chris mentioned, talking about sawdust, then your pore space gets very, very small, and you don't have really good airflow amongst the, the pile, and even your moisture can get reduced if your particle sizes are too small, and therefore your pore size is too small. Now this is a little complicated thing, talking about how you measure uh, your pore space and pore size, but that's all it, all it is, is talking about porosity, which is a measurement of that free air space in your pile. And it is that free air space that determines the aeration. And all this is determined by the size and type of particles, and of course, the size of the pile. Why is size of the pile important? Uh, because the larger the pile, the more weight that's pressing down on the lower parts of the pile and the center of the pile, and therefore, your pore space is gonna be reduced. So a large pile has less pore space in the center than a smaller pile would have. So that's how size of the pile determines your pore space and therefore your aeration. Okay, now this graphic illustrates how particle size and pore space are directly related in that where we have gravel here, which is very large particles, you have lots of pore space, large pore spaces. As we move down the graphic here, going to sand, then silt, and then clay, you can see as the particle size gets smaller, the pore spaces get smaller. And over here in the clay, you can barely see that there is a pore space between the particles. So there is a direct relationship between the size of the particle and the pore space that's created when these particles are mixed. Now, particle size also increases the smaller the size, the more surface area you have. Now, Chris has already mentioned that, that you want a lot of surface area for the microbes to work on so that you get adequate breakdown that happens over a proper amount of time. So small particle size means more surface area, more surface area for the bacteria and other microorganisms to work on. However, small particle size also means very small pore space. So if you got your microbes working in here, pretty soon they're gonna run out of oxygen, they're gonna run out of water, and you're gonna create an anaerobic environment. So, a mixture of particle sizes actually gives you the best balance between uh, surface area and particle size and the amount of pore space you have. So, you really don't want a, a pile that has all large particles in it, and you don't want one that has all small particles in it. You wanna get a good mixture. That'll give you a good balance. Now. I was also talking about how the size of the pile makes a difference in actually the pore space, the water, and everything that makes up the pile. And here's one, that, this little diagram illustrates that. Now, if we were to measure the airspace, the water, and the solids at this pile up near the top, uh, generally you can say you got about 40% airspace, 30% water, and 30% solids. 
That's at the top of the pile. Now, as we go down into the bottom of the pile and into the interior of the pile, and we do those same measurements, our airspace is reduced to 20%. The water then makes up 40%, and the solids make up 40%. So, what is actually happening is the weight up here is compacting the particles down here together and reducing the pore size, and therefore the airspace. So you can see that there is a dynamic going on here as far as that, and that's why it's very important to turn your piles, because moving this up to here and this down to here, you're keeping it mixed together, and the microbes that are happier down here will get new material to eat, and the ones that are happier in here will get material up there. So you can see that the pile size does have an effect on pore space. Now, turning is a great way to aerate your piles or your container, whatever you have it in. Now, we've mentioned turning before and what that entails. And this uh, graphic is a really nice one to show you uh, a relationship between temperature and days of decomposition. And the primary reason that if you're turning your pile every three days, it breaks down much faster than if you're turning your pile every 10 days, it actually never even reaches the temperature you want it to reach. Every 30 days, it doesn't even come close to reaching the temperatures we want to reach. This is more or less cold composting here. The primary difference between turning it every three days and turning it every 30 days is you're aerating the pile. When you turn it, you're aerating it. That is the big difference that's happening when you turn the pile. You're preventing anaerobic environment from developing, and so your thermophiles and even a lot of your mesophiles, they are aerobic microorganisms, so they really need that oxygen. If you don't turn the pile, they use up the oxygen, it turns into an anaerobic environment. You turn the pile, you're adding oxygen, speeds everything up. So the results that we have here are primarily due to increasing the aeration and the oxygen content when you turn the pile. Now, what happens when you turn the compost pile? Well, one thing, you reduce compaction. Remember how we just had that graphic showing how much more compacted the material is at the bottom of the pile compared to the top of the pile? Well, by turning it, you're creating the, the more pore space, you're increasing aeration, and you prevent compaction from happening because you're constantly turning it. And so, you prevent it from developing an anaerobic environment due to compaction. So that's one good benefit of turning the pile. Another one, moisture. Now if your compost pile is too wet, when you turn it, you're allowing moisture to escape from the center of the pile. Because if it's too wet, it's usually in the interior of the pile, not the exterior. The exterior usually drains pretty well and gets dry. So by turning the pile, you're allowing water to drain away, uh, you're allowing it to evaporate into the air, and you're reopening those pores to oxygen exchange that were normally filled with water. So if the pores on the inside of the pile are filled with water rather than oxygen, you're going to have an anaerobic environment, and you're not going to have a good breakdown of the material. And Another thing you can do when you're turning your pile, if the compost pile is too dry, as you turn it, you can be adding water to it. You can either add water directly with using a hose, or uh, you can add uh, materials that have a lot of moisture in them to your compost pile. Uh, now, if you already started it and you're doing a uh, compost pile, want to take it to finish, then all you want to add is water, because you don't want to add any new material to have to break down. But if it's too dry, when you turn it, that's when you add your water. And also, when you turn your compost pile, the uh, healthy microbes and undigesting material will be mixed back into the center of the pile. Remember, it's the center of the pile, the center of the uh, composting unit, whatever it is. The center is where the majority of the heat is happening, and that's where the thermophiles are, are really active. And remember, phase two, the thermophilic phase, is when a lot of the breakdown is happening, a lot of the complicated um, uh, materials are being broken down by the thermophiles. So as you mix the, the material by turning your pile, you're moving the undigested material to the center of the pile where the thermophiles are going to work, 
and you're moving the more finished material to the outside of the pile where the second mesophilic phase can come over, can take over and continue to break down. So that's another really good reason to turn your pile is to keep the microbes happy with the food they have and the environment they're in. Remember, composting is just microbe farming. So you wanna keep your microbes happy. So that's another reason uh, you wanna turn your pile and what happens when you turn the pile. Uh, a fourth reason uh, to turn your pile is to prevent overheating. And as we mentioned in a previous lecture, that if the temperature gets much over 160, 170 degrees, you're going to start to kill your beneficial microbes. Now you want to get above 131 in order to kill the pathogenic microbes and to kill the weed seeds. But if you get too high, you're killing your beneficial microbes. And if you'll remember from a, a graph earlier, where we measured temperature in relationship to turning the pile, every time you turn the pile, the temperature drops. And then if there's material in there and the thermophilic phase is still going, the temperature will rise. So by turning the pile, you're releasing that thermal energy and you redistribute the hot compost from the center of the pile out to the cooler edges and the cool material back into the center. So you help to maintain the proper temperature by turning your compost pile. So that's one of the parameters that's really important is the aeration. And you can see that aeration ha has effect on a lot of different things, on the temperature and on the moisture level. Aeration is the pore size. And so uh, that's another important parameter in your composting. 